Hey everybody! Today Rado runs through Mystic Veil, vale, which is a card crafting game of nature's power. And now, this is a deck builder, sort of. It's really quite unlike anything else, because in this game, you don't build your deck by adding individual cards. You instead kind of add new powers to the cards you already have. And I'm going to show you how that works today in a quick two-player run through. I already got the game set up here. And there are two types of cards. There are these Veil cards that give you all kinds of really cool special powers, but to get them, you have to call upon the the animal spirits, the, the spirits of the land. I like you to get this pool of light, which gives me one wild card spirit every round. I need two sun and an animal spirit, as an example. So, uh, so these are out here to get, but there are these other cards. Oh, what are they called? Advancement cards. These, as you can see, are translucent. And what happens if I ever recruit the Dawn Singer, I can add it to a card that's already in my deck. Like I've got this card in my deck that's a cursed land. It generates mana for me, but it also generates spoil or corruption. Now I can effectively upgrade this card in my deck by getting the Dawn Singer, installing it, and then boom, I've got a card that has now a special power and you know fundamentally changes its function. That's how the game works. It's really, really cool, quite different, and I'm going to show you how it works now. So uh, each player has the exact same starting deck of 20 cards. Uh, there's a few, or what's it called, fertile soil cards in here, but for the most part, there are more of those cursed lands. Because, oh, I should say, we're druids tasked with the awesome responsibility of saving the land from all the curses and corruption that is spreading. So I have been assigned these 20 parcels of land that I have to heal and build up and save. Jen's got her 20, and like I said, it's a deck of some land, nothing's happened on it. It's a blank slate waiting for me to fill this up with goodness. Um, then there are some lands that have curses on them, and there are a few, I've only got three of them in here if I recall right, some lands that are actually fertile soil. So everybody starts with the same deck. You shuffle it up and these little uh, mana trackers, we go on ahead. Everybody gets one at the beginning of the game and I'll take this one. Jen will take this one and Jen is the first player uh, because you can see she got that. So Jen will go first. So let's go ahead and move me out of the way and show you how it works. And just give her deck one more last quick shuffle. La 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 la. La la la, that'll do. Okay, so there is a strong push your luck element in this game because uh, Jen's turn starts out, she flips the top card, puts it on deck, and then moves it into her field. And her first card was a blank. There's nothing good on it or nothing bad on it. Then she flips the next top card. And now she has to decide, is she gonna push or is she going to stop? Once she stops, she can take all the resources she's built up in her field and use it to buy new cards. Now, of course, she's not gonna stop right now because right now she's just got a blank empty field. That's no good. So she'll push and bring out a cursed land. So now she's got one mana to spend to buy these advancement cards, but she's also got one spoil. Now as soon as she put this out, she whether she likes it or not, she has to reveal the next card, which is a blank. Now, Jen can stop, at which point she has one mana to spend. That's not enough to buy anything. You need at least two mana to be able to get some more fertile soil. So Jen's going to push some more. She puts another card out. And, hey, she revealed Fertile Soil. She'll push some more. And a Cursed Land. So now this is where things... Well, actually, not start getting uh, interesting yet. Jen will go on ahead and push. So now she has built up three mana, but she's got two Spoiled cards. And now this is where things get interesting. Jen has got her third card. And... Jen can keep pushing as long as she wants to go, but if she ever gets to the point where there are four of these red spoil tokens on her field or her deck, all these combined, if she has four of them, she busts and she doesn't get to buy anything this turn. And so Jen is now saying she could push. This would get her another mana. She'd go from having three mana to four mana. But then she would have to reveal this card. And if this card is another cursed land, then she will bust and she will get nothing this turn. 
And um, you know, this deck is over a third of it is cursed land. So Jen's gotta decide now. Is she gonna push her luck to get more mana? Because you know, with three mana, what could she do? Well, these are the level one advances, the level two advances, and the level three advances. And let's see, this one costs two mana, four mana, and four mana. This, and then you get to level twos. There's a one that costs five, six, and six, and so on. And then the level threes, hey, that one costs seven, seven, and that one costs nine. So Jen would like to have at least four mana so that she could get a Wellspring or a Dawn Singer because three mana, well, she could get this Peacekeeper Druid or she could buy a Fertile Soil. Um, where, you know, if she had one more mana, which she's got right there, she could put it out here, then she could get the Peacekeeper Druid and some Fertile Soil. So she could upgrade two of her cards, but it might blow up in her face. What the heck? Let's, Jen's going to take a chance. She'll put this out, and now whether she likes it or not, she must reveal the next card. Booyah! She got lucky. I think she's definitely going to stop now. She could put this out and hopefully try to get some more mana, but her next card might be a curse. She doesn't want that, so she's going to stop. And since she only has one, two, three, and nothing here, she does not ruin anything. So now, that what was that called? That is called the planting phase. Uh, Jen has brought all these cards out into her field. Now she does the harvest phase, where she takes all the icons... And gets to use them. And in this case, and now it's interesting. Uh, the the card that's on deck hurts you if it has a spoil. But if this card had mana, it would give you nothing. So at this point, Jen's just got her four mana to spend, and I think she is going to go with what I was talking about. She'll buy the Peacekeeper Druid for two, and she'll get a Fertile Soil for two. And now these things can get installed in any of these cards that she's already got. So, uh, for instance, you know, this Cursed Land, you know, it gets her towards spoiling, but it also generates mana. If Jen puts Fertile Soil in here, now, well, it's still Cursed, but it's generating two mana. So that makes it a little bit nicer. And now another thing Jen could do instead, you know, she drew this, um, this card that was blank. This card does nothing. For all intents and purposes, this card might as well not even be in her deck. Um, but what Jen could do is she could turn this, she could install a Peacekeeping Druid here. And now this card has a function as well. And so, uh, Jen, ha and now, uh, no matter how much mana you generate, you can only buy up to two cards over here. And um, once you start generating cards that create you know, this wellspring, which gives you access to plant and animal spirits, you can start during the harvest, use those to buy these veil cards that will give you additional powers. But anyway, that's it. Jen has powered up these cards. Uh, these go in her discard pile. And now the last thing Jen does on her turn is she does her prep phase where she goes on ahead and draws until she's got three cards in her field and on deck that show a spoil. And the interesting thing is Jen can be doing this while the other player, you know, you know Jen just finished her discard phase. She sleeves some advancements um, and then, uh, you know, and, oh, and she refilled stuff where she had bought. And the next player can immediately be going. So uh, while it's still your turn and you're getting ready for the next turn, the next player can go. Now, I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, I'm just going to go on ahead and say it's my turn. We'll, we'll uh, have Jen go on ahead and start pushing her luck next time. So, oh, one other thing. By the way, if while Jen was pushing her luck, if she had busted, all of her cards in the field would have been wasted, but she would have got a consolation prize. This marker would have flipped to this, and this means this is a mana that Jen has banked. She can use at any point later in the game. Normally, if you generate mana off your cards and you don't use them all, you lose it. But if you bust, you get one. So at least you get something for your troubles. All right, so that was Jen's first turn. Now it's my first turn. Let's go. All righty. And uh, let's see on my deck, I got nothing. And then, oh, some fertile soil. And hey, some fertile soil. I'll keep pushing with another blank. Oh, my first curse. Hey, this is actually going really well. Wow, I'm just burning through cards. Oh my gosh, more fertile soil. And my second, and another. Okay, so now I have to decide. Do I keep pushing my luck? I've got one, two, three. If I bring this out, I have to reveal another one. And if I have a four, I bust. And right now I've got one, two, three, four, five. I'd love to get six, because that means I could get up to a Grave Digger or a Bear Totem. Or heck, if I could get up to seven, I could get a Will-O-Wisp or, oh boy, one of these really high ones. But, you know, no, I, I, this, this is literally manna from heaven. I am not going to push my luck here. I'm just going to take my five. I'm not going to push any farther. And with my five, I'm going to buy 
a plow. As you can see, it costs five mana to buy this. It, these little dots means it was a level two. And now this plow is worth one victory point to me at the end of the game. But in the future, whatever card I put this on, when it comes up, I'll get a mana. I'll get a plant spirit, which is I need more spirits to be able to start buying these, but I'll get a spirit. And this card will generate one victory point for me every round for the rest of the game. And so now again, I could put this on any. I could turn this blank useless card into a useful card, or I can kind of upgrade this card that's kind of, uh, you know, it's got some good and bad and make it an even better card. Now what I can't do, do I have any that are low? Yeah, I would not be able to install this plow here because you cannot over, you know, cover one feature with another feature. So, you know, I'll just go ahead and put this in a blank so I just have a wider variety. Instead, I mean, and there's really two ways you can go strategically. You can try to build fewer strong cards by putting a whole bunch of stuff onto one card, or you can spread the stuff around so you have a whole bunch of weaker cards. I'll just go for a bunch of weaker cards right now. And I'm really happy I got that. That was really nice. I didn't bust or anything. So these all get discarded. This is the, the card that's on deck for me. So, um, and again, normally at the end of my turn, I'd start setting up for the next level, but or my next round. But in the meantime, we'll just have Jen move on to her second turn. So we got to bring her deck back out here. And she's going to start pushing her luck. Hey, it's a blank. It's a blank. There's a curse. A blank, a second curse, a blank. All right, so ugh, does Jen push her luck? She's got one, two, three. If she goes again and she busts, but only two mana. <sighs> well, you know, I mean, two mana, you can just get some fertile soil. And she could put it on any of these things except for this one because she would be covering, you can't cover up anything with something else. So does she just stop now or does she push her luck? She pushed her luck last time and it worked out pretty well. But if she pushes her luck just to get to three, that's really not going to let her buy anything because everything that's out here costs at least four. So I don't think Jen's going to push her luck. She'll just stop and she'll go on ahead and put this fertile. Jen will um, you know, co start combining cards. Ra um, so now she has made this card that is implicitly stronger. Okay. So let's go into her discard pile like last time. And now it's, uh, yeah, and she didn't bust again, so she still didn't get that extra mana. Here comes me. It's my turn again. Let's uh, start going. A cursed land. Ooh, a cur oh, wow, that's not very exciting. Okay. So, again, there's only, th uh, you know, if I bring out a third, it's not going to let me buy something better. So, you know, because I don't, I don't know if it's worth pushing my luck. To because um, I'd have to I'd have to get two out. I think like Jen before me, I'm just going to stop. I'm going to buy two. It's going to be a fertile soil for me. I will install this fertile soil on this cursed land, and we'll just stop right there. All right, easy peasy. Yo, and the first run through the deck, it's not unreasonable that you're just going to have spend a lot of time getting. Um, you know, if you don't want to push your luck, just getting some more fertile soil so the next time you go through your deck you're gonna have you're gonna be generating more mana but anyway back to Jen and let's see so there's two mana three mana four mana all right and here's where she stops she's got four mana already she gonna push her luck you um you know what I don't think so she's just gonna stop right there spend this four mana and she could get a wellspring or a wellspring or a dawn singer now um, this doesn't make more mana for her, but it does give her, I think this would be her first forest spirit. It's the yellow one, which means if she gets more of them and they all show up on the same turn, she could get the Sunstone Airy or the Pool of Light. These are level ones, these are level twos. She could get the Blooming Arbor. So if she, and, but the other thing this does is, well, um, during harvest, she gets one victory point for every um, helmet on this card and this card comes with a helmet so say if jen like okay she puts this on a blank let's say jen's going to spend her four on this on this dawn singer now this is going to be generating one victory point for her every time it comes up but over time if say later on jen could get this feral chieftain uh, come here you these are hard to pick up on a glass table as you might imagine oh come on so you need finger nails all right 
So if she gets this installed, she has upgraded this card. So during harvest, which is when you get your payout, there's one, two helmets. Wow, this is actually really nice because uh, this is also gain one. So um, basically, this thing would go from producing one point every turn to four points every turn if she could get both of these on here. So you can kind of go for targeted upgrades that way as well. So Jen's going to go for this, particularly because she can see that this Feral Chieftain's out here. And if she can get that later, that'll be amazing. All right, so that was her one buy. And these all get discarded. And so, now I'm seeing a new one came out to replace her by some podlings. And now it is my turn. All right, and let's go again. So, hey, there's some cursed land. We knew that. And some cursed land and a blank. And ah, do I want to go for two again? Yeah. Well, you know, this podling uh, just came out here. It only cost me two. I could buy this instead of more fertile soil. It's a helmet. And the interesting thing is, I know Jen just bought this guy. She would love to get this card because then, hey, she could put a helmet on here. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, and yeah, particularly because I'm looking around at what other helmet cards are there. There's this one, but these two won't work together because they cover each other up. So, do I want this for myself? It's worth one victory point at the end of the game, but it's worth nothing else unless I get a card like what Jen just got. So I don't think I want to buy that. It's not really going to be that useful for me. Unless I just want to buy it to ensure Jen doesn't get it to upgrade that card she's got. So I could stop right now and just get another Cursed Land, but you know what? I'm going to push my luck a little bit. Um, I, this, is, this is foolish, this is dangerous, but what the heck, let's go, let's go for it. I've got three mana, one more, and I could actually buy a Wellspring, which is two um, spirits, which is going to get me on the track towards buying Veil cards. There we go. Ah, boom. All right, I busted. One, two, three, four, I am out. And like I said, my consolation is this flips, and now on a future turn, I've got one extra mana to spend in addition to whatever. And so these all go away. And I busted, or it's not called busted. I forget what it's called. I spoiled, I spoiled, but it's more fun to say you busted. All right, so that was my turn. All right, I, and I knew that was dangerous, but all right, so Jen's turn. She's got her cursed land, and a second cursed land, and a blank, and um, so another one comes out, and her deck is empty now, but um, she's going to keep on pushing, so let's get her discard pile out that now has some good stuff in here, and let's see. Just shuffle it up a little bit. By the way, these are the game came with these sleeves that your deck is put in. They're very, very high quality sleeves. So that's really excellent. And all right, so there we go. So Jen's back out. Let's go on ahead and keep going. Another blank. Hey, it's her Dawn Singer. Oh, very nice. All right. And some more mana. And all right, so. Jen's got, if she stops now, she's got three mana and one spirit, which is not really going to help her. And, um, but, for, uh, Jen's got enough mana to buy this podling and put it on her Dawn Singer right now. Although Jen was really hoping to put this Feral Chieftain on there because of the way those two would combo. But she needs, um, she's got only three. This, is, this would be four, but she'd have to push again to try and get five. If she gets that, oh my gosh, that would be a game changer. That would be huge. Huge, I tell you. So, um, oh, oh, okay, she's going to do it. She's going to do it. Okay, here we go. Oh, she can stop. She can stop. She doesn't have to put this out. And now she's got four mana. Not enough to get the Feral Chieftain. But it, it could stick around for a while. In the meantime, Jen could get a Wellspring. Oh. Okay, yeah. I think, um, uh, yeah, she's not going to push luck anymore. She's just going to stop at four mana. Um, and so she's going to harvest now. And remember, hey, this Dawn Singer, harvest. Get one point for every helmet. She's got one helmet on this card, so Jen just scored a point. Now, these here, in a two-player game, there are 23 of them. This is the timer for the game. Once these 23 um, have been gobbled up, that triggers the end of the game. So you can get points on cards for just getting them in your deck, but a lot of cards are, you know, let your deck become a point-generating engine so you can burn through these. So Jen just scored a point, and she's got four to spend. So Jen will buy herself... 
I think one of these, well, hmm, four to spend. She could get this Podling for two and upgrade the Dawn Singer, but then she's giving up her chance to get that. But heck, I mean, Jen's not going to get her Dawn Singer again until we go all the way through that deck. And I might grab that before then. So does Jen, does she wait till later and hopefully get this? Hopefully it's not gone uh, because I don't take it. Or does she just take this Podling now? This Podling for two plus another Fertile Soil for two. What will you do, Honey Pie? Ah, uh, she wasn't listening. All right, I am going to say Jen is going to be conservative. She's just going to take the podling in the hand instead of the feral chieftain in the bush. All right, so that was two. And so now this is producing two points every time in the future that Jen gets it. And she's going to want to put another helmet in this slot eventually. And she'll get a fertile soil. Now, when you get a fertile soil, you can take a top or a medium or, uh, or a middle or a bottom. You know, your choice. Oh, by the way, um, I did, this is a good opportunity to show. The game, every one of these cards, they came with a protective film that was put on as part of the manufacturing process. And when you get the game, there's a little thing here saying, hey, you know, you can pull this film off because it makes them look a little bit nicer. Um, and, but the rule suggests don't bother pulling them off when you first get them because they're kind of on here pretty tight. They're hard to get off. Over time, they'll start coming loose. So you guys get to see, hey, I'm going to take one of these off. And you'll see the before and after. Wah! So it just becomes a little bit brighter, a little bit more vibrant. And the nice thing is, uh, these cards, as long as they have that film, they kind of stick to each other a little bit. So it's kind of nice once you get these off. So I'm going to take, Jen will take this one. Now she could put this in here, and this would be done. But no, she wants to save and put another helmet symbol in there. She will just make another guaranteed mana. Okay. So that was her turn. She didn't bust. And she didn't grab the really cool thing she could have, but... She was just playing conservatively. A new one comes out. Oh, wow. That's perfect for her. This is the last thing. If she can get this middle helmet, boom. This Dawn Singer will be doing quite nice for her, uh, which means maybe I'm going to buy it because I could buy that and then later on try to... It's worth nothing, but later on it'll be worth something with that Feral Chieftain. So anyway, back to me. Back to my turn. And remember, I busted last time, so it just so happens I've got some extra mana. So let's go on ahead and see what we get. Uh, blank... Uh, my second one, blank, blank. Okay, I'm going to have to reshuffle my deck. I can start seeing some of my goody goodness. Wow. I mean, actually, what's in here? Is it possible that I might actually... Nope, I've only got one animal. I didn't get any doubles. So if any of this comes out, that's not going to... You need at least two to get a lot of these things. So looks like I'm a ways off before we can get a Mystic, uh, uh, you know, one of those Veil cards. Anyway, let's just step up a little bit more and then keep on pushing. On deck, out it comes. On deck, ooh, do I stop? All right, so one, two, three mana, but it's really four, although I don't have to use this right now. Hmm. <laughs> In a perfect world, what I want to do is get seven mana because then I could get the Feral Chieftain and the Podling at the same time and just boom, get them both. But I'd have to really push my luck. Although I've got, let's see, if I push this, I go to four, and then boom, I've got five. I can get that chieftain. Although if I've got, yeah. Although here's the thing. If I push my luck and it busts again, I don't get to turn this into a second mana. The second time I push my luck, having not spent this, I've wasted. So I don't think I'm going to push my luck. I'm just going to stop right there. So I've got three mana which is enough just to get this Fertile Soil or this Podling, but I can trade this in to get four mana, and now I could get a Wellspring or the Podling. And, um, you know, I could go for that. Uh, you know, remember, I, I really should because, because this plus this could work out for me later, or I could say to heck with that, and instead I'm going to get a Wellspring, um, you know, let's say, and install it on, say, this Cursed Land, and then later on, not only will this Cursed Land generate mana for me, but it will allow me to let's see it. So it's a plant and an animal, which if, if this, in addition with another plant, would let me get um, the Heartwood Sanctuary, which is, ah, well, this one's not a particularly exciting one. It's just worth three points. Some of them are very, very cool, like uh, this one, which would get me one wild card to be able to get more harvest cards anytime I want. Uh, this one, once per turn, you may spend two mana to use any one uh, spirit. So, uh, this one, once per turn, 
Once per turn, choose a card in your field or on deck, and that one gets a helmet. So Jim would like to get this because that means that could be getting an extra helmet on top of everything else she puts on this if she uh, gets the conclave events, etc., etc. So anyway, I'm stopping there, and I'm just going to get a wellspring so I can, rather than working on trying to get points by doing a combo of that, I'm going to try to start getting these because these are huge. They're very big. I've spent, and now it is Jen's turn. A new thing comes out. It's a Deadwood Harvester, who is an interesting, costs uh, three, and uh, doesn't generate anything, but when played, you can discard any other card in your field. So when it comes out, you can trash, basically, or not trash, you can get rid of a curse so that you could hopefully keep drawing and get something better. Get rid of a card that only has a curse on it, um, you know, a, a curse land, so that later on you can find one of those curse lands that you upgraded with fertile soil, as an example. So that's come out. Jen is going to... All right, so and she, is she going to keep on going or not? She's got three. Mm, if this comes out, though, if it doesn't bust, this is an upgrade thing, Jen would go to from three to five. But then she might bust. Oh, that's the choice. And that, folks, is, that's the series of tough choices you have to make repeatedly as you try to build up your Mystic Veil. I think I'm going to stop right there because hopefully you get a pretty good idea of what the game is all about. Now, if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit the little I in the top right corner of the screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.